How on October the 11th, I did a thing. It was real gangster. <laughs> October 11th is National Coming Out Day. Period. So, period. And so my <laughs> friends who are um, a part of the a HRC, which is the Human Rights Campaign, and the York invited me to come to this event called Out Loud Storytelling, which was hosted at South on Main. And it's called Out Loud Storytelling because you get to tell your own story. And the reason why I wanted to tell my story is I'm going into education. And one of the things with dealing with a lot of people is that you have to learn to accept yourself in order for you to accept anybody else. So I felt like me doing this would put me in a position to where I'm in a teachable moment where I can also learn and be, teach be a teacher at the same time. So what I'm going to talk about today is how I can tell my own story and allow people to be comfortable in my space while being comfortable in theirs. Um, the first thing we did, uh, well, I want to say before I continue that I am a UAL communi communication student and this is my experience. Well, it wasn't completely mine. We shared the experience, but uh, my ego thought it was me and you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I want to talk about first, moving on, is where we were at. So we were at the um, coming out. It was hosted by the Yarn Storytelling Group. The Yarn uses the power of storytelling to amplify the voices and build understanding and create space for human connection website there if you want to go check them out. Um, the, Human Rights um, the Human Rights Commission um, uses this logo a lot and their mission statement is to serve as America, they serve as America's largest civil rights organization working to achieve LGBTQ equality by inspiring and engaging individuals and communities. HRC strives to end discrimination against LGBTQ people and realize a world that achieves fundamental Fundamental fairness and equity for all. Okay. <clears throat> so, one of the things, um, I guess my service related to it is, um, the way it tied into that is, we told stories. In order to prepare to tell the stories, we all met and rehearsed about three times. And the rehearsing was a learning experience for us because we got to learn about each other from our various different backgrounds. And as we told our own stories, and this is me up here putting in the work, <laughs> um, we got to tell our stories in a room full of strangers um, who none of us looked anything alike that we didn't know in order to serve the purpose of both organizations' mission statement to help you know, expose people who need to be supported and who needed to act. And moving on, I will discuss how this had to do with our communication uh, principles. So in uh, one of our earlier chapters, we talked about verbal and nonverbal messages. Well, what I did on stage is I gave a speech about how I learned that I was different. Um, and I learned this through, and I call my difference um, languages. So I learned it through Growing up in a predominantly African American community, we had nonverbal and nonverbal language, where we use gestures, as the book text tells us, gestures, inflections, and dialects to express ourselves. So, from one area to the next, I observed that there were a different set of these cues used to expect to um, express how people express themselves. Excuse me, I'm slow down my speaking here. So, my what I did in my speech is I put those into two separate languages. Um, another human communication concept that I used was the assumed similarity. This is where we compare, according to our textbooks, is where we compare ourselves to the environment around us. So I showed this to you also to further illustrate how we were different and how some of us, you know, assume similarity to fit into our environment is how some of us could. And so, um, My second concept was the social comparison theory. It's how we're assuming um, it reinforced the it reinforced the first one. How we use our um, we try to assume similarities to our environments. It's kind of like you realize that you're not like everybody else. So in my speech, 
I highlighted how we were all different from one another. Okay, so moving on to how I did that, um, the reason why I did this was I was asked to do this and while this organization put this on for us to learn to be ourselves, period. To not be influenced to be someone else. And one of the concepts that I used communicom was divergence. I think once we all reached a certain age, we decided that we weren't going to fit in anymore. The textbooks, I'm gonna give a rough definition, it defines divergence as in intentionally sticking out, using their own language. And that's what I said in my speech, is that at some point I decided I was going to speak my own language and not give a damn who liked it, <laughs> as long as I was understood. And um, an ethical implication I used was integrity. The reason we did this is because who are you when no one's looking? So the whole point of this event was to get us to be that person every day, comfortably and to fight for your rights to be that person for anybody. Um, so in this speech, in this service, I did three things. I told you how I came to be comfortable with myself in this room for this event and how we encouraged each other to do the same. I used the communication concepts, implications, and principles to illustrate that. Also, in accepting myself, I was able to share myself to others. Um, I'm still getting people who were at that event that night coming up to me and saying, that speech kind of helped me out or it helped me understand other people. So sometimes, excuse my language, doing gay shit is cool too. <laughs> like, oh, this is all of us. Bonus points if you can count all the bald headed people in the group. <laughs> Oh man, I was trying to move it back. 